I may have seen my video earlier where I asked the question, can you actually design structures on a Mac? But typically a Mac is not what you traditionally use in an engineering sense. It's normally your trusty Windows laptops. What I've got today is a Battle Royale between one of the top of the range Mac. So this is a maxed out M1 Max, the most amount of RAM that you can get at 64 gigabytes against one of the kings of the laptop PCs. This is the Dell XPS 15. This would be a dream for any engineer to have. So will the Windows PC win out or will the Mac take over? First up, to make this comparison fair, I'm going to be doing it two ways. First up, we're going to be running both of them on their battery power to start off with. As we know the Mac from previous experience, it doesn't slow down whether you're plugged in or not. But we do know that typically Windows PCs don't see their full power unless they're plugged in. But we never know the Windows PC may come out and win when it's plugged onto power, which is typically most of the case. What I'll also be doing is running OBS on both these machines so we can watch in real time as the system runs and the lag behind it. So they may actually be a little bit better under power if you didn't have to run OBS on top of everything. Now let's just get started. How about opening up a software? So how easy is on the Windows PC? This is typically quite easy and how I do it is using shortcut keys just by pressing the Windows key. And this time we'll start RAM concept. On the Mac, it's a little bit different, but it's effectively the same thing. You've got a thing called Spotlight or I've actually downloaded another software called Alfred to help with this. So I just press the shortcut key to open that up, type RAM concept, and then we'll go three, two, one, see. And it looks like the Mac had actually opened up so much faster. Let's just try that again to see whether that, that was default or whether it was actually open meant to be opening that fast. Is it actually opened in the background? Because that was pretty much instantaneous. It wasn't even a challenge there. The Windows PC was still loading. By the time the Mac had even got started, it was pretty much as soon as I hit enter. So we'll get RAM concept up and running. RAM concept. We'll go. Three, two, one. Okay, it's about neck and neck and the Windows PC definitely had at that time a little bit faster. Let's try and opening a big model here. We've got a big model. Let's make it fair because we're both not using post tensioning. Open up the same file, open up the same file. Do let's see we can show it's the same size of model. You can see we've got the same model up and running now. And what we'll do is we will first mesh the models. We'll click it at the same time, 0.45 generate, 0.45 generate. Looks like the Mac was a little bit ahead of the Windows PC there. We can see the pop up came up. We're just trying to keep everything at the same pace. The Mac's ahead again. Didn't have any errors. It'd definitely be beating it. Let's see how much further it is ahead. And obviously you'll be able to see on the recording how much different it is. And the Mac has actually finished. And we're still waiting on the Windows PC. The Windows PC is catching up. We can see a little bit of lag there on the loading time on the Windows PC. But now we're at the same point. Now let's just try a standard calculation. Three, two, one. There shouldn't be anything slowing us down now as we've actually had it skip through all the warnings. Looks a lot closer this time probably. Hard to know, I think the Windows PC is slightly ahead. Now that's really quite surprising that the PC is ahead as before the Mac completely destroyed it in the meshing test. As you see, the Windows PC is actually a couple of stages ahead where we're still detailing reinforce them back on the Mac. But let's see which one can actually get out and display the results faster. See the Mac's only now just got to processing the different load cases while the Windows PC has finished all of that and actually laying out the reinforcement. And it looks like the Windows PC is headed here by Hefty margin. Let's just look at some of the results. Detail the reinforcement. Let's have a look at G bars. We've got shear reinforcement. Bottom mat. Top mat. Well, we're still waiting on the Mac to catch up. That's really quite surprising based on my previous use of it. The Mac was really running really quite well. And this is even before we plugged it in. We'll be interesting to see whether it actually runs even faster when plugged into power. 
So with a running RAM concept, definitely here the PC has taken it for the win, even before it's plugged into power. 15 minutes later. Mac has just finished. Let's just see if it comes up with the same results. So where are we when strength is on? You can see that it's produced exactly the same results. So we've got the same deflections here. So let's close this. And now let's try something a bit more complex. Now, this brings us perfectly into the sponsor of this video, Skillshare. Skillshare is an amazing online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning. And as engineers, it's something that we really love to do. Anyone that's looking to explore their creativity, soft skills, or even management skills, there's thousands of classes for you to take. Invest in yourself and your further growth, and you should go and check out Skillshare. The amazing thing about Skillshare is that you can learn on the go everywhere you are with that ad-free premium content that can also be downloaded. So I've been taking a class on increasing my leadership skills called the Creative Toolkit, Curious History and Discovery by John Medea. It's a great course, especially if you're trying to lead up to become that leader that you always wanted to be. The first of thousand people to use a link in my description to get a one month free trial on Skillshare. I hope to see you over there. Now let's get back to learning. We will try running eTabs. Try and just spin around the model a little bit. See how it feels. We're gonna let it go. You can see there's a little bit of processing time. How about the Mac? It feels a lot more responsive on the Mac. You can see it. So the Mac is definitely a lot easier when you're spinning around the model. Let's try analysis and we'll try and line up the times again. Now this is both still off power. So we can see we've actually finished the analysis on the on the Windows PC. But you think to see as well from that timing, it was about four minutes 30 to see whether it's actually a similar time on the Mac because it actually was behind before it started the analysis. And it's currently at about three, just almost four minutes. So we'll just try and move the models around again to see if there's any difference on the two. It's actually a lot more snappier to use. If we try on the PC, you can see it stops, holds, and it needs to reload everything. Video processing is a lot more powerful in the Mac. So now let's plug it into the power and see if we get any difference. So we'll try that one again. We'll speed it up and we'll just break the model. We'll just might as well run this ETOS model that's currently open at the moment. Probably one of the biggest things straight up after we're on power, we can really hear the Dell's fans ramping up. It's a quite a big difference. Well, the MacBook is still quiet, the Dell is getting really noisy. If you had headphones on or something, you wouldn't hear it, but it's definitely a lot more noisier than the Mac. So the analysis is now complete on the Windows PC. The Mac has barely started. And we see we're spinning around, it's definitely moving a bit faster. It's still got a little bit of loading time. It's not as fast as the Mac but it's still loading faster than what it was before it's plugged in, though it is quite a bit noisier. Now, while we're waiting for the Mac to catch up, I think we can safely conclude Dell definitely takes the cake. If you've got engineering and you need to save time, the Dell is definitely better than the MacBook. Now, that's really quite surprising based on my previous test. The MacBook has a lot of power, and if you have something that's probably really graphic intensive, surprisingly, the Mac is probably going to be better, just surprising by what it is. But the reason why I picked up this MacBook was more for the processing power in the video rendering sense, which it will still beat the Dell on quite significantly. So it'll still be well purposed for the situation I need to use it for. And if you need it for engineering, the Dell XPS definitely is the king of the crop at the moment. So I think we can safely conclude whether you're either plugged in or not plugged in, the Dell is your better option. If there are any other tests that you want to see me to run on either of these PCs, please comment below. And if you're interested in looking at my previous review of the MacBook using it in an engineering sense, it worked quite effectively. And I'll have a link to a video here. And if you're interested in the Boyer channel, there's two ways you can do this. You can look down in the below description to a link to my Patreon or become a YouTube member. Without the support of either my YouTube members or Patreons, this type of content would not be possible. And as always, stay safe, keep learning, and I'll see you next week. Bye.